So reading Harry Potter book two was a huge pain in my neck. I mean that literally, not figuratively. I spent so many hours reading it continuously that I've been having terrible neck pain. I seriously have to make it rain ibuprofen just to be able to sleep at night without too much discomfort. I normally read like this or like this or like this. But like I said, this has been causing me a lot of neck pain, so I assume there's better ways of reading? Please let me know in the comments, how do you read? Bonus points if you can draw a picture of yourself reading using only alphanumeric characters. You could definitely say that I binge read this book. It's funny how binge reading sounds like so much more noble than binge watching. I know the term binge watching really came about when Netflix created its on-demand feature, which allowed you to watch an entire season of a show like in one sitting. Netflix executives tried to get people to use the term marathoning instead of binge binge watching. Which makes sense, I mean, wouldn't you want your product to be associated with something inspirational and fitness oriented instead of substance abuse? I recently watched the entire season of Blacklist pretty much in one day, and the idea here is that I could say, Thanks Netflix, I'm not a lazy slob, I'm a marathoner. Sorry Netflix, I'm pretty sure you lost that battle and binge watching is now officially part of our cultural lexicon. Anyway, back to discussing this book. Spoiler alert, stop watching now if you haven't read the book. But let's be real, unless you're a sheltered homeschooler like myself, you've probably read Harry Potter. When I was making my video about the first book, I googled Voldemort to make sure I was spelling it correctly. And like the first sentence of the search results was like, Voldemort, also known as Tom Riddle. Thanks a lot Google for spoiling all of book two for me. That said, I didn't realize that Voldemort was the son of Slytherin. One thing I think JK Rowling is a master of and explains why she's now writing a series of detective novels is slowly unveiling clues to a mystery and giving you red herrings to make you think you figured it out and throw you off of the real path. So in the Chamber of Secrets, obviously I realized mouth Boy was not the son of Slytherin because that would be too obvious. And I felt like she kind of wanted you to think it was Professor Lockhart because that would be kind of like how it was the unsuspecting Professor Quirrell in the first book. That left me sure that the son of Slytherin was Percy, which it turns out was another big red herring. Nice work, JK. I would have never suspected Ginny as the person who had opened up the chamber. I'll see you next time for book three, and I'll leave you with Dumbledore tweeting. It is our choices, Harry, that show what we truly are, far more than our abilities. Hey.